The first step in logging into the USB scanner is to log in with the web interface using the IP address. If you don't know the IP address, you can always grab it from the info button from the device itself. Now that you're logged in, the first screen is the dashboard. From here you can see total files scanned, number of USB devices scanned, and how many infected files you found. For now, let's click on the scan option so we can go over a few settings. The first option is enable folder scan. In the event you only want to scan a particular folder instead of the entire device, you can enable this option and set the folder name below. Useful if you frequently find yourself scanning large hard drives and terabytes worth of data. For the demo in most environments, this setting will be turned off. What action of a virus is found? I'm going to set it do not clean because I don't want to have to reload my test USB stick. For most environments, you would want to set this to delete file. The next setting is exactly like it sounds. How often do you want to force the user to rescan the device, even if nothing changes? For my test, I'm setting it to six hours, but most will set this to never expires. Now that the basic scanner settings are ready, we can distribute our driver software. Since the software is a small driver MSI file, it can be pushed using any software distribution method, but we will manually install using a clean USB. After scanning a USB stick, push the info button and then the download driver button. Remove the USB and head over to your manufacturing device for installation. For my test, I'm using a 64-bit Windows 7 laptop. Inside the Semantic ICS folder, you will find a 32-bit and 64-bit installer. Step through the wizard and proceed with the installation. There are no options to pick from. To uninstall, repeat the process with the USB stick and choose Remove when you launch the MSI file. After the installation, you will see a new semantic icon in the taskbar with no options other than show log. So now that the setup is complete, let's see what happens when I try to plug in the USB sticks. For the example today, I have two different USB devices. The yellow one with an X is the one with the viruses and the other is my clean stick. Also I want to show you what is on each one. Let's plug it in and take a look. On the clean USB, we have a couple of JPEG files, a 7-zip installer, and inside of the Acme folder, we have everyone's favorite SSH tool, PuTTY. Before scanning either USB device, let's plug it in and see how the USB will be completely blocked. Clean or dirty, it doesn't matter. Since it hasn't been scanned, the entire thing is considered bad for now, and it will block the entire drive. Now let's scan the clean USB drive, verify that it's good before inserting back in the manufacturing unit. After scanning, there's a new six hour timestamp on the device and now all of the files on the USB stick can be accessed. Let's go ahead and open up a few so you can see them. For argument's sake, let's say that I now want to add a new file to my USB stick, but I'm not going to rescan it. I'm just going to stick it right back in the manufacturing system. Let's see what happens. The same device, not rescanned, still has the original six hour timestamp on it. Let's open the drive. Notice how the new file is blocked because it hasn't been scanned. However, since the other files haven't changed since the last good timestamp, I could open those if I wanted to. I'm going to rescan my USB device now and try it one more time. This time we're going to try it again after it's been scanned. Look, I can open my screenshot this time. 
On the dirty USB, we have an iCar sample, a zero day sample, and the same PuTTY EXE as previously seen. Let's load the zero day up to virus total and see what happens. Looks like virus total shows that the file is clean. Let's take a look a little bit later at what the USB scanner shows that file to be. Let's scan the USB stick with the viruses on it. Remember our settings are set to do not clean, but we're gonna try and insert it into our manufacturing unit anyway. The unit has been scanned, but not cleaned, so nothing on the device is allowed to be accessed, even the clean files. Remember, this device had putty and viruses on it, so access is denied completely. Now we're going to change the scan action from do not clean to delete file and scan the device again. This time there's an option to clean the device. This should only take a few seconds. The last test will be to insert the dirty USB device to see if the viruses have been cleaned and now I can run my PuTTY SSH client without any problems. If you have any additional questions, please reach out to the IoT team at Symantec. Thanks for watching.